Hi, I'm John Ombler from the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. I'm joined today by Sandy Jenkins from the Canterbury Support Line. And the reason that I'm joined by Sandy today is that um, once every six months, Sarah uh, has a, a wellbeing survey across Christchurch to see just how people are getting on with the recovery from the earthquake. And it's happening that in the, the last one, 79% um, of people said that you know, things were basically going pretty well for them. Now that's fine, but if my maths is any good, and it, it is, that means 21% of people don't feel quite like that, and that's not nearly as good a story. And that's where things like the Canterbury support line come into, into play. And for those 21% of people who are still finding it tough, Sandy, what is it that the Canterbury support line can offer those people? The Canterbury Support Line is a free and confidential service. Um, we've been set up for the last five years. What we can offer is advice about the process. We can connect people with other services that may be able to help. We can provide free earthquake counselling referrals. Mm. And we can put people in touch with the services that might be able to support them through the whole earthquake reboot. But rebuild a process. Yeah, and so what sort of size of group have you got um, on the end of phones when people are wanting to ring in? There's a call centre in Auckland, yeah. so people are available to answer calls from 9am to 11pm seven yeah. days a week. Yeah. They can answer some initial queries. If there is more information required, it's referred down to myself or my colleague Jill Ashton, and we will get back to the caller within 24 hours mm. during the week hours, office hours. Yeah. And we will be able to assess ongoing services, provide information, help them sort out a plan for where mm. they want to go to go forward to dealing with the issues that they've got. That's tremendous. And tell me, um, what sort of people are you talking to? Absolutely everybody. Yeah. Everybody from your 85 year old who's finding the whole process overwhelming to professionals and family people that have just been dealing with this for mm. so long that they've run out of energy to people who have got very minor issues in the scheme of things mm. but are really important to them to people who are stuck in the system unhappy with Fletcher's, their insurance their peers hmm. and so on yeah. and and other social services outside of that as well if it's appropriate to refer on yes and um, you've had a good success rate well um, it's hard to know about my, <laughs> what happens would be beyond me but we've talked to 50 people per month there's yeah. about a hundred calls going to the call centre per month okay that is less than it used to be yes. it used to be double or more that number right. of calls we were receiving but I think that we are still here, we are still providing the service. Well it's good that the numbers are tracking down, but if there's still the sort of number that we know about who are struggling with recovery, then yep. talking to people like yourself um, must, must help with that recovery journey. Absolutely, and the resources that I can refer people on to are earthquake support coordinators, mm. the residential advisory service, the elder care support workers, right. and a variety of other potential services, EQC and so on. Right, so sometimes the call centre deals with the issue, sometimes you deal with it, sometimes yep. you simply refer people on to, to the right person Absolutely. that they need to talk with. That's right. And, and over the duration of the, of the uh, support line, how many people has it talked to? Over 20,000 people Over to 20, date. Over 20,000. Yep. Right, and if you're, get, you're getting a, 100 calls to the, um, to the uh, call centre and 50 coming through to you yep. per month now, then that's um, it's a good sign. Yes. Fewer it's still people. Fewer people, yes, but still lots of people who have got mm. sad stories really are getting to the end of their tether and really mm. still need to have that ongoing right. support. And so that's what we're here for. So there'll be, there'll be people watching this video on the Sarah website now What's your advice to those people if, if they've still got some issues? Pick up the phone. I mean, I may or may not be able to help, but sometimes just being able to talk to someone mm. and getting it off your chest in the first instance is a good place to help. Right. Sometimes I can offer something that they don't know about and make some suggestions that may be able to move them mm. forward. That's good. I think it's really important that we, we keep appreciating the fact that recovery from an earthquake isn't just about... Um, pulling things down and building things up, it's about people. Absolutely, and it's the emotional toll that this process mm. is taking on people, the decisions they've had to make, the waiting, the lack of trust in some of the processes mm. that they've been going through, and they've got families and wider people that they need mm. to look after as well. Yeah, well look, the, the work that you're doing and the people who work with you is really appreciated, thank not you. only by me and the people at SERA, but by the community. So thank you very much for what you're doing. It's appreciated. My pleasure. Good. Thank you. As you're aware, just recently on September the 4th, we marked the fifth anniversary of the first of the earthquake sequence to hit Greater Christchurch. 
Five years sounds like quite a long time, but when you're trying to rebuild a city from the damage that's been um, wrecked on it, it's not very long. It is pleasing though to see a large amount of effort right across the residential area and the central city with the rebuild. Uh, we're now close to 50% of the way through the rebuild effort, um, which is tremendous to see. Looking at one specific example, the bus interchange, which I've talked about a couple of other times uh, on this video, um, it's, it's great to see that it, it is now finished, um, both stage one, which opened some time ago, now stage two, uh, a great asset for uh, public transport, the public transport network across Christchurch. It's, I'm a public transport user myself and um, have my metro card and I just want to make a plug for public transport. I can get from the bus interchange to the airport for $2.50 with this metro card and when you think about the price of taxis, why wouldn't you do that? It's just a great service for Christchurch. Uh, so I encourage everybody to use the, the public transport system and the bus interchange. And when you're there at the bus interchange, have a look at the, the artwork provided by Naitahu for the bus interchange. Um, it's really well worth looking at and I commend it to you. The things I've been talking about in the discussion with Sandy earlier are uh, covered in the future Christchurch update which will be in people's mailboxes this weekend. Thank you very much for watching.